hem e, Kansas'tan katılan sayın hem Özbekistan'dan katılan sayın hocamıza hem moderatör sayın dekan yardımcımıza ve katılımcı olan e, sevgili öğrencilerimize teşekkür ediyor ve bu oturumun da bu hafta yaptığımız diğer oturumlar gibi keyifli ve verimli geçmesini diliyoruz. Bu artık bu senenin e, Özbek Türk Hukuk Haftası'nın e, son oturumu. E, biz e, oturumlardan ve oturum dışındaki sohbetlerimizden hem çok istifade ettik hem çok keyif aldık. Teşekkür ediyoruz. E, söz e, moderatörümüzdür. Buyurunuz. Teşekkür ederim. Uh, I guess I will switch to English for the sake of the meeting. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to be a part of the project, also the meetings, and luckily enough, today I will be the moderator. So welcome all our guests face-to-face uh, -face and online. So today we will be talking about the reforms in Uzbekistan. As we know, the constitution was amended brand new last year and was in force since 1st of May, I guess. So we will have uh, Professor Waterjan Cosimo as our main speaker. And then we will have a very distinguished lawyer from Kansas University, Professor Dr. Richard Levy. So the mic is yours, uh, Professor Bozirjan. We are waiting. Thank for you. you so much. Uh, hello, dear friends, uh, esteemed colleagues. Uh, it's so nice to see you on the last day. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about um, constitutional reforms uh, in Uzbekistan. Uh, so, and I will uh, focus on uh, three points, uh, namely, Next slide. I'm sorry. Yes. Next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, three things mainly Uzbekistan's constitution, a glance of as history and overview of the key constitutional reforms in Uzbekistan and key amendments of the 2023 draft constitution. Uh, so uh, my presentation is about overarching amendments, overarching evolution of Uzbekistan's constitution. I think it's important, why? Because it is Uzbek uh, Turkish law days and uh, by my presentation, I'm going to give you just a general picture of Uzbekistan's constitution and its evolution so far. So uh, if you uh, look at the next slide, uh, please. Um, here, uh, Uzbekistan gained its independence on August 31st, uh, 1991, after the fall of uh, Soviet Union. And that's why you feel that in our legal system there is a Soviet heritage and our legal system uh, are like each other. Uh, and uh, on this date, uh, the constitutional law on foundations of state independence uh, was adopted and it served as a temporary constitution of Uzbekistan until the adoption of Uzbekistan's constitution. And the constitution of Uzbekistan was adopted on the 8th of December, 1992. So we regard our constitution as a supreme uh, law of the land. It's stands at the highest level of hierarchy of laws in Uzbekistan. So, and uh, if we look at the key constitutional reforms in Uzbekistan so far, we can just uh, divide them into three big phases. Uh, they are just uh, started in 2003 uh, by forming the Republic of Uzbekistan and it uh, shifted from unicameral system into bicameral system, uh, which means that our uh, parliament now consists of lower chamber and upper chamber, lower chamber called legislative chamber, and upper chamber is senate. And uh, next one, uh, April 
uh, 11, 2007, the president was removed the responsibility to have the cabinet of ministers. And uh, we started having the position in government, prime minister of Uzbekistan. Uh, we had still this position. So uh, it means the responsibility of the president of Uzbekistan was shared uh, with the prime minister and decentralized okay, some powers and some presidential powers just uh, you know, were distributed among presidents, senate, and prime minister of Uzbekistan. And a big change happened in 2011 by introducing a vote of no confidence to the prime minister. And uh, it was very significant. Why? Because uh, through this uh, change, we started having elements of parliamentary republic into our system. Uh, and next phase started uh, with uh, 2017. Okay, and uh, the Supreme Judicial Council of Uzbekistan was established, and the Supreme Court and Supreme Economic Court was were united, and administrative courts were founded. And in the same year, the powers of the Constitutional Court of Uzbekistan were expanded. So, in these phases, we can summarize that in the first phase, phase uh, uh, uh, constitutional reforms were focused on mainly distribution of presidential and parliamentary powers and establishment of prime minister position and changing to bicameral parliament. And in the second phase, we feel that constitutional reforms were focused on judicial reforms. So, uh, next, next slide, please. <clears throat> and steps towards the adoption of Uzbekistan's new constitution. Okay. Some colleagues argue that now we have new constitution. Actually, it is new constitution, but structure will not change it. And that's why okay, I would call that nowadays we have constitution in a new edition. So according to our legislation, so if more than 50% of the constitution okay, changes, you may call that law in new edition, but structure <laughs> is not changed completely. So uh, last year, okay, we adopted, uh, we made uh, new amendments to our constitution and uh, how it started in 2000, uh, 22, Parliament only majlis formed the Constitutional Commission. And after that, draft constitution was prepared based on people's proposals. So it means Constitutional Commission opened just platform for people to receive their feedback about our current constitution and their proposals, okay? So, and commission has selected um, more than Sorry, there was a mistake. More than uh, 60,000 proposals from citizens. And draft constitution underwent national discussion. Okay, based on these proposals, they prepared draft constitution. And draft constitution just uh, were put for nationwide discussion. And more than uh, 160,000 additional proposals were received. And after that, in March uh, 2023, Zali Majid decided to hold referendum and determine its date and the Constitutional Court check the constitutionality of this procedure. And after that, in April last year, the referendum was held for the draft constitution to be adopted by the citizens of Pakistan. Okay, the uh, rationale okay, for these amendments were just uh, explained by some reasons, such as Uzbekistan uh, wanted to recognize itself as social state and also secular state, and also uh, wanted to recognize some uh, human rights. Uh, this is deriving from international uh, documents, international uh, treaties, and also some uh, rights okay, attributed to the 21st century nowadays. So, if you look at the structure, uh, 
our previous okay version of constitution had six parts, 26 chapters, and 106, uh, 128 articles. And nowadays, okay, we have six parts, uh, 27 chapters, and 155 articles. And nowadays, we have more rules, 434 legal rules. As the text of the constitution increases to 65%, Human rights rules increase it three times and half times. So next slide, please. Okay, what are the key amendments? Uzbekistan now recognized as a sovereign, democratic, legal, social, and secular state with a republican form of government. So this part changes. And the state takes measures to ensure the employment of citizens, protect them from unemployment, and reduce poverty, so based on a okay, social aspect. So uh, the constitution just has this rule now. As a state organizes, encourages professional training and retraining of citizens. And as you know, social state uh, is based on welfare state concepts. So it's not easy to build social state. Why? Because many states just uh, became wealthy rich and after that they decided to shift to social state why because uh, budget is needed for that so as i know in turkey you have rule in our constitution which says uh turkey is the uh, social state but within its budget but now in our constitution we don't have this rule and any person, okay, may argue or may just present a complaint that they're not satisfied with social progress. So maybe we should look at these uh, rules and uh, maybe make further reforms, okay, based on Turkish experience practice. So, and also the amount of paid pensions, allowances, and other types of social instances established by law cannot be lower than the officially established minimum consumer spending. And everyone has a right to housing. The state encourages housing construction and creates conditions for the realization of the right to housing. As a procedure for providing housing for socially vulnerable categories of population is determined by law. Everyone has a right to health care and qualified medical service. Citizens of the Republic of Uzbekistan has a right to receive a guaranteed volume of medical care in the manner prescribed by the law at the expense of the state. All contradictions and ambiguities. Okay, uh, for social aspect also, we want to mention that nowadays under the president of Uzbekistan, we have social protection agency. And this uh, social protection agency deals with the issues matters related to underprivileged people in Uzbekistan. Uh, so the agency has a status uh, of agency under the president of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Uh, so, and it has overarching and detailed programs aimed at uh, different groups of underprivileged people in Uzbekistan. So, this agency was established after these amendments. Okay, it's the realization of these constitutional rules. And at the same time, I want to mention that social state requires the government to expand its powers. Why? Because by okay, these rules, government takes more responsibility. And it requires to establish additional agencies okay, with powers, and also it requires just more okay, budgets. And at the same time, it requires administrative reforms okay, in the country, and we are conducting this kind of reforms in Uzbekistan. But it's not easy. Uh, people are surprised sometimes why we established that ministry and now emerged with different uh, okay, ministry. Uh, so we are on the journey, on the journey, and uh, uh, we just establish evaluate effectiveness, and it's and when it is required to reorganize state. Okay, does that does that? Okay, all contradict more human rights are granted uh, by these amendments. All contradictions and ambiguities is legislation that arise in the relationship of a person with state bodies are interpreted in favor of person. So uh, 
actually we have this rule, uh, not in constitution, but in a different law, statutes, but uh, we constitutionalized some rules from statutes and gave them constitutional title status and introduced them to constitution. Why? Because when people face legal problems, okay, uh, it's highly likely for them to open constitution, not statutes. So if you guarantee more rights, if you constitutionalize human rights, they have a chance to know their rights better. And also, uh, it's a good chance for courts, lawyers to refer to the constitution directly. It's strange as human rights is a country at the same time. A citizen of the Republic of Uzbekistan cannot expel it from Uzbekistan or extradite it to another state. A suspect accused or defendant is not required to prove his innocence and may exercise the right to remain silent at any time. It's beyond the rule. A person cannot be found guilty or punished if his confession of guilt is the only evidence against him. It's very important. But well, because law enforcement body just gets evidence of citizen. This statement, yes, I'm guilty, but now constitution that it's not enough. But well, because it makes the job of law enforcement body easy, that they should see, search more evidence to prove guilt of a person. And our constitution now has more chapters, such as civil society institutions. Uh, previous version of constitution had NGOs, but civil society institutions uh, wider than civil society institutions. Maybe you don't have it, but we have we have Mahalla. Mahalla is very, very local uh, body and it relies on also traditions. If there are no laws related to local issues, Mahalla just can handle this issue based on traditions of Uzbek people nationality. So, and family, children, and youth. It's very important why? because family is national value for our society and also behavior of youth and their education is something Asian, Eastern matter in our country, in Central Asia, and our constitution just considered that national value and regarded and introduced it. And also the bar. So previous version of constitution just had chapter on public prosecutor's office, which is Soviet heritage, uh, but uh, current version of constitution has bar, defense lawyers and their daily rights. Next. As for government structure, okay, we have, I'm going to give you some information about the legislature, it's called Ali Majlis, it's legislative chairman of Senate, the cabinet of ministers and courts. What changes, okay, with the government, please, next one, uh, is that uh, the previous version of the constitution had a rule according to me, president uh, presented the nomination of Prime Minister uh, based on the submission of the winning party. So let, let's say five parties and one party just uh, wins the election and receives the majority, receives in the parliament. Okay, that uh, okay, party has the right to present. But now it changes and the president of Uzbekistan can present the nomination okay, himself. But the president must consult, consult the political factions in the lower chamber of all images. It requires consultation anyway. And, uh, but we, our constitution, okay, uh, keeps uh, a vote of non-confidence and the parliament uh, can require <laughs> any member of the parliament report before the parliament and suggests the president, okay, he should uh, okay, remove uh, government members from the position. So as the exclusive powers of the lower chamber increase it from five to 12, as the legislative chamber will be responsible for working with the government mainly, 
As for Senate nowadays, exclusive powers of the upper chamber increase from 14 to 18, and the Senate will be responsible for working with the local representative bodies and appointments and foreign policies. Okay, these powers uh, were distributed between chambers. But before it was mixed, you know, and now legislative chamber with government and Senate is about local representative bodies, appointments, and foreign policies. The okay, next the local government, a person holding the position of Hakim, here you have Bali, yeah? of the region district city cannot simultaneously hold the position of chairman of the Kengash of People's Deputies. Well, because uh, it poses danger uh, on independence of Kengash of People's and Deputies when the same person just is a head of Kengash and uh, okay, talking, so it's not separation of powers. So new constitution, new version of separate uh, these positions. And as for judiciary, the court's uh, system will be determined by separate law, it says, and the constitution will govern the powers of the constitutional courts and the Supreme Court of Pakistan. As the constitution will guarantee the constitutional campaign is, is uh, institutional. Okay, actually, our constitution just introduce a constitutional campaigns. Nowadays, citizens of Uzbekistan uh, can file a constitutional campaign to the Council of Uzbekistan with one condition. After exhausting all legal remedies, not directly, if they just file a complaint directly, it will be definitely rejected. So next one. Okay, so uh, summary <laughs> says Uzbekistan uh, has been developing and its constitution has been evolving. So it's dynamic. It's a super land of the land. And we are teaching now students based on the UVA constitution, writing new textbooks, and they published it recently, new textbook based on these amendments, and doing research and selecting new topics because research is important. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Perfect. Turkish people can some chance they can. Okay. English also, please. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's about Mahalla and the way it works. Nasıl çalıştığını mı? The, how it works, the, the concept of Mahalla that you explain. Okay, uh, Mahalla is self governing body. It's not within the government, it's beyond, out of the government. Okay. And we have a law on uh, self government, self governing body of citizens of Uzbekistan. So if you, let's say, you live in a neighborhood, right? Within a particular neighborhood, okay, there is uh, Mahalla. Mahalla is all people okay, living in the same neighborhood. Like Mahalla, Ma yeah. yeah. Okay, who are 18 years old, okay, they can elect the head leader of neighborhoods, okay, and also they can organize their office. If they have issue, okay, they can go to Mahalla uh, so that their issues can be considered. For example, let's say domestic violence. We have legislation recent legislation according to which we have prevention inspection, women's activities, social service, okay? So women can go to Mahalla about their domestic violence. Well, because if they go to government agency, it can be just accepted in a different way by family, okay, by other people, okay? That's why I want to tell the culture, okay? It's different. And they just, Talk to person okay who uh, committed domestic violence okay it's a very very local level and prevent uh, okay domestic violence domestic disputes you know so, uh, and but it does not uh, stop okay women to go to police or other agencies okay or call okay directly so it depends on the woman of course. But 
their concept, okay, from that mahalla to put them, okay, in the course, to let them know, okay, what's happening in this local area, okay? So mahalla works on different directions with young generation, or in direction of uh, promotion of business, helping people, okay, let's say to uh, establish and run their business, or let's say to provide employment for women, different, different directions. I wonder what is the remedy for my like what can this this okay so uh, it's it's it's about prevention it's about prevention of further domestic violence in context of domestic violence for example of domestic violence uh, and also to keep family united okay so but it depends it depends on the women okay women can just uh, uh, want a okay, just legal remedies because of remedies şey söyleyebilir miyim ee, ben şunu anlıyorum şimdi bizde mahallenin ve köyün e, başında muhtar adını verdiğimiz bir kişi var <gülüyor> seçimde bunu duymayanınız yok bir de muhtarın etrafında ihtiyar değildi var. İhtiyar yaşlı adam demek değildir. Muhtar da işte muhtar da ihtiyar da aynı kelime kökünden geliyor. Doğruyu yanlıştan ayırma kudretine sahip olan kişiye muhtar denir veya ihtiyar denir. Şimdi tarihi olarak bizde bu kişiler Muhtar ve ihtiyar heyeti bu fonksiyonunu, sizin izah ettiğiniz fonksiyonunu bugün kaybetmiştir. Ama doğru mu anlıyorum lütfen onun için soruyorum. Bu izahı genç arkadaşlar için ya. Onlar muhtar ve ihtiyar heyetini böyle bilmiyorlar. Doğru mu? Muhtiyar heyetini kim polancalardan oluşur zannediyorlar. Evet. İhtiyar bir, e, eski bir kavramdır. Hakkı yar. Dersiz tamam, anlatır. Evet. Hani, seçme hakkı demek. Ya seçme hakkı. Doğruyu yanlıştan ayırt etme anlamında seçme. Şimdi ben şunu anlıyorum anlatılan. Hukuken bağlayıcı olmamak üzere. Ama geleneksel olarak uymak zarureti olacak şekilde bir kimse ihtiyar heyeti müracaat ettiğinde onların uzlaştırıcılığı sonucu verilen karara uymak zorunda var. Ama bu mahkemenin yerini alan bir şey değil. Doğru mu? Yeah, um, so uh, Mahalla just uh, functions within uh, its power, okay, the law provided just burden of its power, mm -hmm. and they are just matters of very local character, mm -hmm. so, um, and uh, we have just a law on local government and constitution, and these okay laws provides more and okay, more serious okay things matters okay, attributed to high level of the character. So, um, but if mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Mahalla okay just do okay, works within particular territory mm -hmm. and which is attributed okay local issues. Mm -hmm. But when Mahalla okay thinks that. It does not fall in house, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Mahalla just uh, refers the issue to government agencies or recommends the people who go to okay, government agencies for solution. For example, domestic violence. If there is, let's say, crime element mm -hmm. in the domestic violence, Mahalla must report it to the police. It's their responsibility. So you see that civil Özel hukuk problemlerinde daha çok fonksiyonu ifade ediyor. Civil law issues. 
Ama toplumsal temeli var bunun diye anlıyorum ben. 92'de de bu kabul edildiğinde toplumsal temeli o var ki uygulana gelmiş, kabul edilmiş. Okay, it's, uh, it was history too. Mm -hmm. You know, we know Turkey nowadays by offline in person, but we saw movies like Chukur. Okay. Chukur bin Mahal. Professor, that's going to be a very hard exam. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> history, we have community in the United States they have all of state they have from never put from legacy. So uh, nowadays not Katana Now in nineteen ninety two they give the legal they they they give constitutional status to Mahalla. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Okay. okay. Eskiden de vardı ama anayasa yani. Peki bütçesi güçlü mü? Bütçenin uh, they, they have good bad budget or not? Evet. Bahalı. Çünkü çok önemli bir sosyal fonksiyon ifa ediyor. Diye anlıyoruz. Yes. Bahalı. For Bahalı, government gives money. From the government budget. And now I will do some correlation like this. Correct. Uh, for example, uh, we have a special organization. It's inside of uh, government, like Ministry of Mahala. It's not uh, like official ministry, okay. but it's uh, coordinating. coordinating of this kind of uh, institution. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, But this heat of this institution, uh, the same of ministry, right? For example, minister of education, the same position. Okay. If I say correctly, so they uh, last six, seven years for this institution, government gives uh, many attention on centralization, like government's function. Functions from the highest to the yes, civil society. For example, now there's inside of Mahalla, not all the police officers, tax officer, and the social service officer, social service officer, government service officer, uh, and prosecutor officer too. And how we call them seven sectors. Bütün bu temel ihtiyaçları ilk basamakta evet. dengelemişler. Evet. Evet. Evet. Evet. Evet. Evet. Evet. So, so, it's, so it's super decentralized. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. bottom up model. model. Decentralized, yeah. decentralized. But only connection, as far as I can understand, is the budget is coming from the government. Main yeah. government. So yeah. that's where you know they hold the chain. If they, you know, the public or government agencies are just giving function as local government. Mm -hmm. The local government are giving powers to Mahalla. Mm -hmm. Because if people just uh, yes. believe that when, when people enjoy 
this kind of social services okay, in the local areas, so at the local level, okay, I think it's small okay, well. Aslında dolaylı olarak sosyal devlet anlayışı bir ölçüde mahalle üstünden tesis edilmiş ve yürüyor. Yeah. Doğru mu? Yeah. Doğru. Başka? Ha. Söz Tamam. Kusura bakmayın çok soru sordum ee, ama çok bilgilendim. Ee, Ekranda da konuklarımız var. Burada da e, öğrenci arkadaşlarımız var. Ben biraz onlara sözü bırakayım. Evet. Ee, I have some further questions, but uh, before that, uh, I'd like to give word to our distinguished professor commentator. So if Professor Richard Levy is here with us, we'd like to hear his uh, commentation on the issues that we were happily discussing over here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to participate. Um, I thought the discussion was very interesting. I will admit I can't follow everything that was going on um, in the question and answer, but I was struck by the fact that every governmental system struggles with the problem of balancing the centralization of authority um, against the need for local adaptability and control. And uh, every government has different institutional structures that are designed to uh, strike that balance. So we in the United States use a federal system. So our states have independent constitutional status. Uh, within a state, there's a separate constitution. Those states typically have a unitary system of government with no federal sub entities, but they still have to give power uh, locally to municipal governments of one kind or another. Uh, so these mahalas strike me as a mechanism which um, the government cedes uh, some local power to specific entities that are better situated to deal with local problems without uh, uh, giving up control centrally to, to the government as a whole. I don't know whether that's responsive to your discussion or not. Yeah, I, I honestly can't agree less. <laughs> um, well, I guess, uh, Professor, do you have anything to add or? Well, I could talk more broadly about constitutional reform uh, as described and offer some points of comparison uh, between the United States Constitution um, and what I understand to be the emerging Uzbekistan con constitution, if that would be of interest. I'm pretty sure everyone's eager to learn from you, Mark. Okay, uh, well, I, I had several observations that struck me as I was listening to the description of constitutional reform in Uzbekistan. One is from at least the perspective of the United States, it's striking that there have been in the short time since the first constitution was adopted, several major reforms that have occurred. Um, uh, whereas in the United States, our constitution is over 200 years old. And although we've had some amendments, there haven't been anything uh, in the nature of that kind of significant shift institutionally or in, in terms of the kinds of rights that are protected. So our constitutional reforms have generally been relatively minor through specific constitutional amendments um, and through uh, changes that are not in the constitutional text, but that have been developed through judicial decisions and institutional change within the government itself without any explicit change to the constitution. 
a, a, a second feature that that struck me um, is the at least the importance in my view of having strong institutions um, in order to implement uh, the rule of law and to protect constitutional rights. Um, and uh, it seems to me, at least initially, the reforms in Uzbekistan surrounded the strengthening of the governmental institutions um, in an effort to uh, ensure a constitutional order that would function and could be enforced. Um, and uh, I guess a third observation uh, is that the recognition of social rights in the latest round of constitutional reforms um, separates Uzbekistan from the United States, where we do not have any significant recognition of uh, social rights. Um, we have some minor recognition in some state constitutions, um, and the limited experience we have with social rights in the United States it indicates that it is very difficult to uh, implement and enforce those rights in practice. Uh, so I'll be uh, interested to follow the experience of Uzbekistan uh, with the realization of the newly enshrined uh, social rights, like rights to health care and uh, employment. So I hope those observations are of some interest. Be happy to uh, further explore if uh, there's any interest in it.